Welcome back YouTube. I hope you can hear me today. It's raining outside. This is the 1st of January 2022. I was hoping to get a lot of stuff accomplished on the combine these last three weeks with our business. We took off um, the last three weeks of December and going to return on uh, 3rd of January, Monday. Uh, I'll be honest, I just wasn't too motivated. I was resting. We had a big year with the business and went and took a couple trips, as you've seen in uh, Wildcats videos. Uh, I'm getting back to the clutch today. Uh, just give it a little bit of time. Um, we, this has went on longer than I was hoping, but uh, we had other things to do and wanted to do some resting. So today, uh, I went ahead off camera, I painted all these last Saturday uh, and because the weather here has been up and down. It was 70 degrees on Christmas Day. Down, rain, moisture, up, down, all over the place. So all this stuff was starting to sweat and I'd already cleaned it uh, with the temperature changes, trying to keep the doors closed. It's not a fully heated 24 hour, seven day a week heated shop. So I went ahead and painted some things. What we're gonna focus on today is a little task and maybe we'll get further. We have to put a felt seal inside of here where the throw out, let me get this, goes in and out. It's going to move when you depress the clutch in and out like that. And there's a felt seal that goes around here. So just trying to put everything back as 100% as I can do it. Been studying on what adhesive to use in here. Sorry, I was out of frame. Going to go with, we've had very good luck with this. We get it at Napa. 3M Auto Yellow Super Weather Strip and Gasket Adhesive. Fast drying, exceptional bond strength, firmly bonds, gaskets, and seals. Right or wrong, this is what I'm going to use. I have good experience with this. So that's what we're going to do. Um, should work fine. This isn't rocket science, what we're doing here. So we're going to bring you along and uh, kind of get things rolling. This gasket that I am using is part number 228032M2. I hope you can hear me. The rain is uh, really hitting the roof this morning. So I'm going to do a pre-fit before I, uh, this feels kind of stretchy, before I glue it in. Let's see how that goes. Hope you can see everything. We added more lighting out here. Just uh, for our own eyes and for the camera. Because uh, when we put up those black dividing tarps, they really absorb the light. I was amazed at how much darker it made it. This is looking pretty good. We may have to trim it. Although... I want to pull it around, just kind of practice fit in here. <clears throat> Looks like it's about an inch too long, which is kind of to be expected. But I want to just kind of see how it's going to fit. We want to get it to where it fits good. And this is going to go in there well. And it looks like it's going to be a snug fit. So we're going to have to get that way down in there when we do it. Getting a little shorter actually. Got a 
half an inch now, maybe an inch. So definitely want to get it fully seated into the groove for testing purposes before we I think I'm going to go ahead and snip that. I think we will have enough uh, and then see what it's like. So I snipped that off, worked on it, got the throw out in there. That's going to be a nice fit. This will be spinning. Throw out will be stationary. That will be spinning. So that's going to be an important part of keeping dirt out of there with that spinning and uh, moving in and out when the depressing of the clutch. So I think what we'll do now is we will put that in with the adhesive. I snipped off about that much felt. Um, so that's going to be a given that you're going to have to do that when you buy the seal. They're going to give you extra. So now I will work on the adhesive part. I'll begin with the heat adhesive. Has a nice tube on it. Should work well. Then I'll use my glove to uh, smear it around. stuff is sticky so it should work well kind of pushing it onto itself so I have this in now I got a phone call while I was putting that in so uh, just working it around with my hands down into the adhesive uh, I think we did an excellent job here uh, get that down into the lip and really it's not going to be able to go anywhere once that's up against it and spinning let's check our fit oh yeah that's easy, doesn't roll it, doesn't roll the lip of it, that's easy, that's going to be nice. So that's how you put that in. Once again I'm using a 3M adhesive, auto adhesive, gaskets and seals. So I think we have us a winner. And uh, so that's how you put that in. Now we're going to start talking about the clutch here in a minute. If you can hear me, it's picking up more and more uh, rain coming down. Uh, one last note, this gasket costs $4.37 for this felt here. Okay, the next process of this is going to be talking about in your manual. These are very important if you need, if you're working on this. You need to get this off of eBay. That's where I found mine years ago. So I have my clutch discs here. I've taken you off the tripod. These are a NACD. Uh, I borrowed this clutch alignment tool from a mechanic that has helped me immensely. He had a drawer full of them. He's done so many clutches. The clutch flywheel disc is part number 102440-4. V as in Victor 91. Now originally that part number was 024404M91. They now have a V in there. So still subs to that. I got this from Massey. I think I could have saved some money on eBay but I had already ordered them after I thought about that and you will notice that there is a side here that sticks out it protrudes out 
that's going to be talked about in the manual. You want to assemble this correctly so that that works properly. There was a kit online that the clutches came with, but they only had four pads. I mentioned this in another video. I went with this. These were $169.17 each. So a total of $338.34. So parts add up in a hurry. Um, you can get a cheap combine, but you will put and spend some money in it. But if you take care of it after that, it's going to last you a really long time. Even if it's an older machine and you take care of it and you replace these parts, you divide that over the years that you use it if you're a small operator. And it's not going to be that much in the long run. For some of this, I'm going to be reading right from the book. So we have our exploded view, figure 8, and assembly of clutch. Place clutch pulley number 10 on bench with the machine surface up. That's what we're doing here. Right here. Now I did not send these off for machining. I cleaned these up with a real fine grit sandpaper and I feel they're all right. There is a minute, minute stress crack, heat crack or heat stress right there. It's not going to affect it. I have seen a lot worse working and this surface is more than sufficient for a combine. So we've got our number 10 here face down machine surface up. Place clutch plate number 7 on pulley with long side of hub down. Remember I talked about that? So you have the protruding edge. Try to get it there. You want that to be down. Now if you do not have this clutch alignment tool right here, the book makes a provision for that which you'll see here shortly. And the other plate, okay let me correct that, place one clutch plate number seven that's up there in your diagram on the pulley with the long side of the hub down. Center plate number eight that's your intermediary plate. That goes in these grooves. There you go. So just like that. I'm, it's shaky, but I want to get this close up for you. Okay. Number eight. That's number eight right up here in your diagram. Okay. And other clutch plate with long side of hub up. So, see, if you had these facing down like that they would be resting on each other and not able to work so you have to put that protruding edge now facing up and this is where you can begin to use your clutch alignment tool hopefully there we go there we go now you have them aligned for when you go back on the thing, on the, on the transmission, not the thing. Okay, now it is telling us to install cover assembly number six. That's your spring-loaded pressure plate, which I have here with the new bearings installed from the previous video. However, and that's good, but it's telling us to proceed with it all the way and put our cover on over there. But we're not going to do that because we have to do clutch finger adjustment. So I will read this to you and talk about where you, if you don't have the alignment tool, what they tell you to do. And so, and, and install retaining bolts number 11, but don't tighten. This is the important part. Here's your retaining bolts. They will go in here, right here. These bolts must be left loose so clutch plate can be aligned when assembled on transmission shaft. So that's why you would leave these loose with the cover, get it all on there, and then tighten them up if you don't have the clutch alignment tool. So we're going to proceed now into clutch finger adjustment. 
Okay, we had a brief break because I had forgotten to chase these holes and I do not want to twist a bolt off in there. So I had one that was a little tight. So I just chased all the holes with my tap being careful not to break it off in there because you would have a mess getting it out. I also want to talk about there's a machine surface here that this goes down in. This is the pressure plate. You can see it's a little bit of a lip there. So you want to make sure that's lined up. So, one other thing that I want to talk about, I don't know if it makes much of a difference. Uh, these have been balanced because you can see in here where they did all kinds of drilling. And I will be honest with you, I did not mark where this came from and I had three different clutches. I'm using all the best parts, so I'm just going to line these up with these, make sure they're in this area and uh, it should work fine. I don't think it'll be too critical, but in the future, I would have marked where that was, tried to keep using the same part so it all goes back in the same orientation of balance. But however, that being said, unless it's the first time you're changing the clutch, you don't know whether the other guy paid attention to that. But just my thoughts on the matter, but we're going together with this, and then we'll get into clutch adjustment. One other thing to note, I did get a new pressure plate and in the other videos where you see me struggling to get these fingers on or these springs on, uh, I probably said what the price was but I don't remember and I didn't go back and watch it. All these go in finger tight now. Now I'm going to tighten them kind of like a um, tire, one, two, three, four, five, six, do a cross pattern on it. This machine lip will go down in here, but it will not perfectly close because you have the edge of the pressure plate between the pulley and this part here. Now, as you bring this down with your tools, you will see the clutch fingers move down slowly. And the reason we don't have our cover on here, sorry about the focus. The reason we don't have our cover on here is because we got to adjust these according to what the book says. Then we'll put the cover on there. and we will adjust those. With the bolts tightened, the fingers have went way down below this machine surface. So, to adjust the clutch fingers, I hope this isn't getting too boring for you. When new parts have been installed, proceed as follows. Assemble parts as described in items 1 and 2, which we've done. Install your retaining bolts. Tighten retaining bolts and adjust clutch fingers to 1 16th of an inch above the machine surface of the cover assembly. So that would be, right here is the machine surface. We need to now get a straight edge and see what we can do with adjusting those. I've been trying to come up with a way to show you how to set these. I'm sure not every person has this dial indicator. So what I did was I this is magnetized here. This is on zero and I also checked it when it's on here. I turned it and it's zero here. So I'm pretty confident that we're straight across. I've already adjusted this one up uh, 0.0625 and it uh, appears to be good. This is a piece of sheared 16 gauge which this can vary um, on thickness. That's not a precise tool but it's what I could fit in here and get across here and 
show you that it's about it's just a little bit this is a little thinner than 0625 this is a little proud above it this is like 057 something like that so 625 so that's a little bit proud using the dial indicator I think we're di dialing in there I have these wrenches here this one's a blue point this one is a super wrench they're really long they've been handy it's a Williams super wrench but it's nice and thin so you can get on these jam nuts and work with them that way so the turn it the right way here getting the jam nut let me get it um, up there so I'm at zero you can almost turn these by hand and you'll see that you can dial it right around six one six two six two and a half oops I went past it a little bit and then when you mess with the jam nut it also moves it you got to get it just right so there is zero six two point five zero six two point five but when we mess with the jam nut a little bit we'll have to adjust it again Here we are again, uh, 0625, just a little bit proud over that feeler gauge that I made. Granted, this is not scientific. This probably has a little bit of error in it, but we're going to be right there. We're, it's not uh, a rocket ship, as I've said before. So I think we're going to be doing all right, and we've got one more to do, and then that should have them adjusted. I'm sure that people can come up with different ways of doing this. This is, I wanted to try to show you. It's not very much over this area here. It's not very much uh, difference. So um, I'm sure there's a little bit of give and take in there and it may have to be adjusted again later. But I doubt, if we get according to the book, I doubt we'll have much problems. Okay, the last one has been adjusted. We should be 1 16th of an inch, 0 0.625, and it's a little proud over that gauge of 16 gauge sheet metal. So I'm happy with that, and the jam nuts are locked down. So I hope this has made sense. We are going by what the book says right there. You can pause it if you want. And fingers should be adjusted one sixteenth above the machine surface of the cover assembly. Hope that helped out there in the field for you. So now we're going to put the gasket on here. It is a part number 240486M1. That uh, is right here. That will go on right there, hopefully. Everything lines up. We have our cover here. So now we got the clutch finger set. We got the alignment tool back in. We're getting ready to put the final cover on and bolt everything together for the final time and then we should be able to fit it on the combine at the appointed time. Okay, it all lined up and now we're going to be ready to put these six in, pull it all back together down here because that's under tension. Those fingers will go back down. They should be set from our uh, measurements and then we will torque these said to torque them somewhere I read it I think uh, to 15 to 18 pounds yes installation of the cap screws number four tighten the number 11 bolts figure eight which is up here number 11 bolts to 15 to 18 pounds so we'll work on that 
and then we're back to installing the clutch which we will have to measure out the fork release bearing finger clearance 90 thousandths to 125 by adjusting rod number five we'll figure that out when we get there that'll be on the combine and we also have to put our brake rod in for the transmission brake so the gears don't grind I'm going with 17.5 pounds so Got my torque wrench here. There we go. There we go. spun one of our star worshers out. We'll have to take him back out and get a different one. And check everything again. Yeah, that's not good. We've got plenty because of all the clutches we tore down. Okay, we're back at it. I find that just cleaning up the hardware and reusing it is about as quick. This is what was on it. It worked all those years. So, I mean, it did fail me there, but once this is on, there we go. Now let's check them all. There we go. Those are doing good. That is torqued up. Got a Craftsman torque wrench. I think I bought this torque wrench when I had my first combine back in the 90s, probably after I got home from the service. Bought a really nice 300, and I'm always kicking myself for selling it. That gasket that I put under here cost uh, five dollars and two cents if you're keeping track. So we'll clean up now and give an overview of this prep we did today and what's coming next. A quick, quick recap. We spray painted the edges where the uh, pressure plate piece was so that wouldn't flash rust. We are ready to begin on installing this with the throw out bearing and then that will go on over here we have to get this cleaned up get this I want to get this freed up it's kind of stiff from setting get that working good we got to get our rod back through here for the transmission brake get these cleaned up and get it on got to redo this cylinder you can see it's leaking hoses are original they're all cracked and frayed they're going to give out change all the bearings in the variator and the belts and then we'll have this clutch side done moving into the final drives got to clean them up and got a twisted off stud right there we'll be fixing that new seal all the way around there I've replaced a lot of those seals and while we're got it off we're going to do the brakes because we're going to have a good set of brakes on here I hope this has been helpful there will be more to come as we adjust the clutch forks that go against here like share and subscribe please comment that helps the channel for wildcat and we will see you in the next one thank you